This is Evil Al, and today I will be talking about Quez Watkins. It looked like he will return against the Kansas City Chiefs. Also, I want to talk about Micah Parsons is satisfied with taking the L. And lastly, we're going to talk about A.J. Brown and how he flipped the switch. But let's get straight into it. All right, so before we get into the topics, I actually just seen this tonight. It looked like it's been floating around. So it's about Carson Wentz. So shout out to Carson Wentz. You know, he got a job with the Rams. He's going to be the backup for Matthew Stafford. I think it's a good gig. You know, the Rams are a pretty good organization. You know, he probably found his foot in there. We will see what happened in the future. But was going around to Carson Wentz is that I think Rob Maddie, I believe that's his name, put Carson Wentz in a very sticky situation, right? So instead of just reporting that he signed with the Rams, Rob Maddie went in to, I guess, discredit the Eagles or talk bad about the Eagles in a way, because he said something in the matter of, I can't see the tweet for whatever reason why I'm doing the video. It was something in the matter of, instead of Bible study, and wide receiver stabbing him in the back. Now he got Cooper Cup. Something in that matter. But you guys to see the tweet, I really can't. I think that was distasteful a little bit. Even Carson Wentz admitted himself like he could have did better. When he went to Washington, he talked about the Eagles a little bit. Like, man, I could have been a better leader. You know, so this had nothing to do with his religion or anything like that. This had to do with plain and simple leadership. He was not the best leader on the field. And you're the quarterback. You could get away with not really being a good leader as a lineman or as like a linebacker. Hell, even a wide receiver at times, like a safety, maybe even a cornerback. You don't have to be that vocal leader guy. But as a quarterback, you somewhat have to be the leader because the ball is in your hands. The guys got to trust you. They got to believe in you. And. I believe the Eagles thought he was talented. He just didn't have that leadership role because what also confirmed it is that when he went to the Colts, Colts haven't had a better quarterback than Carson Wentz since Carson Wentz left. Hell, I would say in years besides, of course, Andrew Luck, who they had Matthew Stafford. No, not Matthew Stafford, Matt, Matt Ryan. Um, who else? Philip Rivers and those type of guys. I don't think at this stage of their career was better than Carson Wentz because they had a younger Carson Wentz who, you know, won nine games, which was OK. It was decent. Guys lost to the Jaguars. That's a division team. That is what it is. But one of the things the owner said was like, it's somewhat Carson Wentz leadership he didn't like. And then he goes to Washington and those guys didn't believe in him. So was it us, the Eagles, or was it him? And then it's this video floating around of Carson Wentz. Looked like he wasn't happy that we won the Super Bowl. It was unseen footage. And I don't like the bashing of Carson Wentz, to be honest, because I always say this. If Carson Wentz had DK Metcalf and Justin Jefferson, imagine how we did the draft right. You know what Carson Wentz? still be in Philadelphia with those guys, with those weapons, you, you never know. Hell, even if he drafted A.J. Brown and Justin Jefferson. But instead, he went Rager and J.J. Ortega Whiteside. So, you know, I, I, again, I don't want to go in on Carson Wentz because he, he's a legend, man. Love Nick Foles, but the way Carson Wentz started that season was epic. It was amazing. And Nick Foles just took the baton and finished the finished the race and won. So I, I give credit to both quarterbacks and, you know, I think it's Rob Maddie for everybody was happy for Carson Wentz, but to throw a dagger at the Eagles, that, that just wasn't right. All right. So let's get into the topics today. Quez Watkins, Quez Watkins looked like he is back. He posted some on his IG store and posted side by side with me. Like, y'all, he, he's be back soon. He'll be back soon, and this is the best time for him to come back. You know, Dallas Goddard got hurt. You're going to come back, and you're going to be the guy that get 
the third most receptions more than likely or the third most, most targets, I should say, more than likely, because now you don't have the Dallas Goddard as the safety blanket. Now you got to rely on your third wide receiver. Zacchaeus, since the Tampa Bay Buccaneers game, he's just been a utility guy. And then he don't have the burner to stretch the field. And we know Julio Jones, a legend, but he he don't even have the burners to stretch the field. Hell, they might even use him more as a tight end role until Dallas Goddard get back in a way. So Quest Watkins is good that he'll be back more than likely against the Chiefs. And I am very, very happy about that. So Quest Watkins, man, the season ain't over. You know, all off season, so you're gonna prove a lot of people wrong. And honestly, his absence probably proves some people wrong that we might need him on the field because we're not really getting production out of that role. So Quez Watkins, all he got to do is come back, do his thing, stretch the field, and make some plays, man. And the thing is, well, at least me, we're not questioning Quez Watkins' skills or. I'm not questioning Quez walking skills. I'm somewhat questioning his heart. Like, is your heart still in it? Do you still want to play for the Philadelphia Eagles? Do you want to show that you still got it? Because that screen play was an epic fail. You know, you could have split between the two defenders. Instead, you tried to run all the way outside and cause the fourth down, which now when I look at it, hindsight is 2020. You know, maybe he was dealing with the hamstring. He didn't want to get hit and we pulled him out. And then it looked like Jalen Hurts stopped believing in him because at one point he was wide open in the end zone for a possible touchdown. But Jalen Hurts like, nah, tried to squeeze one into Devontae Smith, which was an incomplete pass. But at the end of the day, man, Quez Watkins. He's in his own way. I know he's talented. He knows he's talented. But Quez Watkins is in Quez Watkins' way. So hopefully come back against the, against the Chiefs and do your thing. That's what I'm hoping for you. All right. Uh, speaking of guys that just, you know, love taking L's, love more victories. We got to talk about Micah Parsons, man. Michael Parsons, you got to hold this L. But let me go ahead and play this clip. We know we played good enough to win that game, but we didn't. That's just how the dice is rolled sometimes. Um, sometimes you play good enough, and good enough ain't never good enough. And that's just the reality of the game. I mean, I feel like we got even more confidence now. Look, man, if you happy with moral victories and media love because of moral victories, I'll take it any day. If Cowboys are satisfied with putting up stats, numbers, and being happy about that and losing, I'm cool with that. You know, some Cowboys fans are 50 50 what Michael Parsons said. Some are like, man, I hate that he said that right after the game. And some people are like, well, it is true that did this and the defense was this, but we lost, but we know we could compete. This is what I have to say about Cowboys fans. And to the whatever Cowboys player even look at this video is that, look. The Eagles didn't play their best game. We didn't play our best game and we beat y'all. So what makes you think the next time you see us, you won't beat us? I don't know about that one, but hey, take your moral victory. Thumbs up. Great for you. I like the regular. I, I like the normal wins. You know, we eight and one, y'all five and three. We two and a half games ahead. You know, all we got to do is handle our business because I'm not afraid of the Chiefs to me. They don't have enough offensive firepower to beat us, in my opinion. The Bills are too up and down. Not sure what Bills team we're going to get. San Fran, we'll see what San Fran team we get. Will we get the San Fran team now or the San Fran team that we've seen beat the Cowboys? And um, I believe we could beat both. So that's just me. And then after that, we got Seahawks depending on what Seahawks team we get, but Seahawks are definitely hard to beat. And then the Giants, Cardinals, Giants, or something like that. We could handle that. We, we could definitely handle that. And I guess lastly, let's talk about my guy, A.J. Brown. This is what he had to say on, I believe it's called Speak. 
been this good. I've been watching your career since you was at Ole Miss because uh, I was a college football analyst. Then you come into the league. You was at Tennessee, got some love, didn't get crazy love. Now with the Eagles, a 1,500-yard season last year. You got a 1,000-yard season through nine games this year. You got a 1,000 yards through nine games, first time in Eagles history. Mm. Have you always been this good, or what was the moment that the switch flipped in your career that you said, you know what, now I'm top two and it might not be two? Mm. You know what? I can I can definitely say uh, I wouldn't say I was always this good, but I always just believed in myself and I always just went to work. But when I got to Philadelphia, you know, playing along playing alongside my brother Jalen Hurts, you know, just having that that just being comfortable playing playing with them, you know, you know, I feel like we can do anything and everything whenever we step on the field. We feel like we're the best in the world as soon as we step on the field, you know, and, and everybody come to see us, you know, and that's the mindset we have when we come out and play. So, uh, so when I got to Philadelphia, uh. A switch just it just I just turned on a switch, man, and just and just try to push myself even more, you know, because of uh I'm playing along somebody that I care about. All right, you heard him, man. Jalen Hurts calls him that flip that switch. He always been talented. Always been talented, but man, came to Philadelphia, he loved it and been playing at a high level. And I gotta salute AJ Brown, man. I definitely gotta salute him because he did bring some life into Philadelphia. Like, yo, we've been dead in the waters for a wide receiver for a while. Him and Devontae Smith brought some life at that receiver position. You know, a lot of people like to give Carson Wentz a lot of love for having receivers that didn't get over 500 yards. But, man, those times were a little depressing, man. It was a little depressing. I know we had basically a one-year rental on Alshon Jeffries, but he was at the end of his career, and Alshon still got love for the Eagles. The Eagles got love for him. You know, he is a Super Bowl-winning wide receiver that came here. But since then, it's been a drought, and A.J. Brown and Devontae Smith definitely ended that drought. So I'm very happy for A.J. Brown, not only that he is winning, but he loved the city and wants to win and get to play with his brother, so... But hey, man, what do you think? And how do you feel about the news today? I know I went in a little bit on the Carson Wentz thing. Went longer than I expected. But Carson Wentz was my guy, man. I'm not going to lie. He was the guy for real. He was the guy. But the leadership, getting in his own head, uh, I, I just couldn't take it anymore. But that Super Bowl year, he was epic. Even though he couldn't finish it due to injury, he was epic. Also, Quez Watkins, how do we feel about him? I can't wait for Quez to come back. I personally can't wait. I know a lot of people hate Quez or whatever, but I can't wait for him to come back. And AJ Brown. AJ Brown flipping the switch. But this is Eagle Al, man. I'm a